blog kind of addresses everything. What what do you think is the most pressing issue right now? In human in, in rights. Pressing or depressing? No, pressing. pressing <laughs> Urgent. Urgent. What do we need to be focusing on? So, you know what, I, I think there's a lot of critical issues today, and, um, and at the end of the day, you can't, I don't know if we can, I don't, I'm not sure the nation really was a, had the luxury of, and, or could have afforded to focus on health care for as long as it did, but it didn't really have a choice because that was the, the, the debate um, kind of went go away. So, but today there are, there are security related issues and there are health, public health related issues and AIDS just continues to be on the top of the list and, and um, 25 million people have died, 33 million people or so are living today with the virus and the biggest statistic of all is zero, which is the number of people that have been cured. So I think we're making a lot of progress. I think we've come far, um, but we we're not there. So I think um, I think that is, is very important. I think that we have to um, I think we have to educate our our uh, ourselves and our next generation, our communities, if we're going to really fix all this, a lot of this complexity and be competitive in the universal landscape and. Um, because it is a global um, competitive landscape right now and our competition is not the guy next door, but it's the guy around the world. And, and do we have the resources, the intellectual resources, the financial resources, the human resources to compete? So I think we have to prepare ourselves because we're not going to fix some of this in a day. People see fashion as being superficial and surface level, which a lot of the time it is, but why, what got you into wanting to help people and get involved on a deeper level? I mean, I've always said over the years that you can, that you can, um, but that it's not just what you stand in, it's also what you stand for, but not only what you stand for. And it's not just that, it's not that you, what you wear is that you be aware. And, and it, you can change your outfit, you can outfit change, or both. So I, I think at the end of the day, um, you know, we're defined very often initially by what we look like on the outside, ultimately by who we are on the inside. So they both, Merge. They find this 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 place where they come together, and and I've spent much of my career navigating that um, process and uh, and trying to find a way to make them mutually relevant and coexist. How do you think that sort of all of this activism influences your brand image? You know, I, I believe it's people. I think, I think I I believe, and I always have believed that people respect it. Many don't, and we certainly have had feedback from people who haven't, and, um, and I respect that. Um, I respect people take the time at any level and share with us their thoughts. I believe it then far more accepted that people are respect the fact that we've got the courage to talk about substantive issues, and that we can we have and that we're prepared to relate what we do with who we are, and. Um, and I think our business has shown that over, over the years. Absolutely. As a member of CFDA, do you have any exciting new people that you are really think are going to do well in the future right now? Upcoming designers that you're excited you about? You know, I think there's a whole new generation of designers, and, and as there are new musicians and new artists are, are continuing to rise up, and they always do. And I think it's great, and it's inspiring to everybody around them. And, um, you know, the market has to be receptive to it, and it usually is. You know, the process has to encourage them, and hopefully it will. Absolutely. Okay, so obviously you started off, as everyone knows, in that 40-foot trailer. Are you aware of sort of the pop-up trend happening now with, like, Cynthia Rowley is, has, in Dallas right now, has a pop-up truck that's exactly like what you started with, but that's her well, sort that. of novelty. And then there's people doing it with food, and in New York right now there's several people doing the same thing that are doing coast-to-coast -coast tours. Would you ever consider going back to that model for a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we talked about it. I mean, our business, unfortunately, is is a little more structured right now, and it's harder to do those sorts of things. But we are always looking at kind of new, creative ways of of delivering our message, uh, our product message, fashion message, and our social message. So, but I didn't know Cynthia was doing that. Good for her. <laughs> well, um, this is a kind of abstract question, but. I don't know if you're familiar with Tom's shoes, the guy I, that I, does I that. Know. Do you think there's a correlation between shoes and helping people? I don't play very well. Since you're a shoes guy, do you? I don't play very well. I, 
I, I don't know that there's specifically a correlation with shoes and <laughs> people, but um, I have said that it's great to be known for your shoes, but it's better to be known for your soul. And um, I think what what, uh, what Blake is doing with Tom's is, is, is great and it's very admirable. And I, but it, we're not, it, our, we don't, our industry doesn't do this. Or we're not exclusive here. I know others have done the same. And um, I, I don't think enough of us are. I do believe at the end all business will get involved, more involved with the community and they'll realize that they have no choice and either their hearts will get them there or their balance sheet will get them there. And hopefully it'll be the former. Absolutely. Well, do you have any, any advice for aspiring designers or aspiring philanthropists? Um, just find a reason to be, find some a unique point of view because obviously no one needs more of what they have. So you know, find that place and own it and, uh, and be it better than anybody else. Thank you so much.